goblin friends! Welcome back, Art Adventurers. It's me, Mr. Tom, and today we're going to do something awesome. Let's go. First, we're going to need the right tools. My favorite HB pencil. Decked out with a foamy rubber thing for a comfortable grip. And a book for sketching. Okay, if you've been watching my shorts or following along on Instagram, you've heard the stories and you've seen the shorthand version of the process. But did you know that this was based on real life events and actual bats? Spoiler alert, it was. But first, the sketch. I love drawing bats. Usually they're in flight, like mid-flap, but I wanted to make our guide more human-like. After all, he's bat folk, so we'd have to have more people proportions, which meant longer legs, longer torso, and you know other people stuff. The wing situation was going to be tricky. Too much wing and he's a tall bat. Too little wing and he's a weirdo bat face. So I went with a cloak to look like wings. It's cheating, yes, but it doesn't rule out the notion that bat folks can fly. While I clean the sketch up, I'll tell you more about the real life events that got us here. We were on vacation in Costa Rica and we went on this hike that led to a waterfall. The water was crystal clear but full of zinc so fish couldn't live in the water. One of the first markers on the trail was this small bat cave that had dozens and dozens of bats hanging on the ceilings, which is where I met this guy. More on that in a bit because now we're going to transfer the sketch to watercolor paper using a light box. Now you might be asking yourself where can I get a light box like that? and or all the materials you use, Mr. Tom? That's a solid question. Because if you check out the link in the description below, it has all my supplies, and if you pick anything up, it helps out me, as well as all the acutely believable creatures on the channel. Now for the highly controversial topic in the watercoloring world, taping. Some swear by it, others say it's a waste. All I know is, I've never had a painting run off on me while it was taped down. While it's firmly detained on my painting board, I'll give my paints a little shower. When watercolors dry, they tend to hibernate, so a little sprinkle will wake them right up. I want his face to be lighter than the rest of his head. It will naturally highlight the area that I think is the most interesting. So we'll start off light in the middle and dab some darker brown along the edges while it's still wet. That way when they dry, they'll blend more naturally. We can always add more color later if it dries and the effect is too subtle. So far, I'm liking what I see. I'm gonna head to the Cape. Now, in our story, the bat folk live near the teak forest around the mystic waters that they guard, which is again based in real life. The trail that led to the waterfall was surrounded by teak trees. And if you take young teak leaf and roll it in your fingers, you get this deep brick red color. So that seemed like the right color for our cape. Let's see, I messed up a little bit right here. Watercolors are a cruel mistress. Not enough water or too much pigment and you'll get a completely different color than you had before. But no worries, I'll just slap another coat over the whole thing to cover it up and we'll never speak about it again. We'll do the, uh, the dark bits and pre-shadows with an appropriately dark color. I call this one Brownie Dark Shade because I can't find the actual name of it. Now this is one of my favorite techniques for making a gradient. Overloading the darkest part with a ton of pigment and then pulling away from that area with a clean wet brush. Some colors, even within the same set, can behave really differently from each other. I know this color in particular is pretty pigment heavy and works really well for this technique. And this is the stuff you learn when you work and practice with the same palette. Since this bad folk was serving as a guide, his walking stick was a pretty important tool. As such, it should have some character. While the paint is still wet, I'll sneak in three different shades of brown and later I'll add some wood grain lines with the fine liner. All right, we're almost done with the painting part. We just need to go over everything with a little wash, which is just a super watered down mix of paint. This is just to tie everything together. And I also wanted to warm this up a little bit, so I'm using an orange yellow and going over everything except for the parts that I want to leave white. While we sing the cleanup song and put away our paints, pencils, and brushes, 
let's think about the rest of our story. Now, as we were on our hike, I couldn't get over the notion that nothing could live in that pristine water. It didn't seem fair, so I decided that it had to be because there was something bigger at work. Something more important that maybe we weren't meant to see. So I came up with the idea that this was a place for passing, peace, and transition. It could only happen at night, and who better to oversee the whole thing than a nocturnal animal? Hence the bats we met earlier on the trail. We're getting closer to the finish line, and what better way to get there than through the use of fine liners? These simple waterproof ink pens are just the thing to finish off watercolor paintings. For something of this size, I use three different pens, an O2, an O5, and a teeny tiny O05. The smallest I reserve for the tiny details, like the wood grain on the walking stick. I use the largest pen, or the O5, for the outmost lines and anything that may be in the foreground. The O2 gets used everywhere else. Now the only problem with adding dark lines is that it can make all the other dark areas on your painting look dull and washed out. The solution? Add more dark. Like that uh, brownie dark shade I mentioned earlier. We'll sing the cleanup song one more time and peel the tape off to finish things up on the iPad. Since I sell the originals, I like to at least keep a digital copy for myself and who knows? Maybe we'll see this again if I do another coloring book. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you and here is your high five. Like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos and shorts. Check out my links below for supplies and my original watercolors. And until next time, hugs and high fives.